Hi, I'm Eric. This is my roundhouse. We're in the Madhow Valley in Washington. So I mostly grew up on the East Coast, but ended up on the West Coast enjoying the mountains. So I was living in the Seattle area, spent a ton of time going out to the mountains, and then finally decided to just move out there, mostly for, you know, recreation, climbing, skiing. A lot of people who are attracted to regions like this kind of have an idealized vision of like moving to the country, having this big property, growing food, stuff like that. I was pretty intentional about how I wanted to spend my time out here. I think if you get a big property, it's pretty easy or almost essential to spend a lot of your free time taking care of your property, you know, plowing snow, taking care of trees. That really drew me to want to live in town and have a relatively small property so I could be out here, you know, not have to drive much, but still spend my time kind of what I moved out here to do, which is have fun in the mountains, basically. I wanted to do it kind of as cost effective as I could. So that got me interested in alternative options. I was thinking about something smaller or even like a tiny home on a trailer or something like that. But when I was kind of running the numbers and looking into costs, I realized I could just spend a little more and get a permanent dwelling. It just seemed like a better investment, uh, especially because I was able to get a piece of land. I built this roundhouse from a kit from Smiling Woods Yurts. It's a 25-foot diameter yurt. This is permitted as a single-family house. It's at a lot in town, about a quarter acre lot. So on this property, I, I built a couple sheds. I built this building first just to keep all my stuff in while I was working on things. That's just a 10 by 20 shed, which is the max you can build without a permit, so that's nice. The siding is old barn wood that I got from an old barn in the valley. So it makes it look nice and classic. So that shed is mainly for my outdoor gear and just household stuff that I don't want crowding my small house. <laughs> so my property is kind of up on a slight hill right in the middle of town. So I have a nice view right over the lower part of the neighborhood. Great view even though I'm in the, in the middle of town, which is what made me want this lot so bad in the first place. There are no utilities on this lot when I got it. Um, so I actually had to route the water line from the lower street down there, which was a whole kind of earth project. Electricity came from a couple blocks over here to the other side. I had to bring things in from pretty far away to get everything routed here. Definitely somewhat expensive to do that, yeah. The power and power conduit is especially expensive. So I have propane for mainly for my water heater and also for the cooking stove. I wanted to use propane because we're out here in the country and I was worried that the, the power wouldn't be super reliable. So I wanted reliable heat. All right, why don't we go take a look inside? Welcome. This is my house. It's um, about 500 square feet. Pretty simple interior. Have a loft space in here. This building has 11 foot walls and then the vaulted ceiling above that. So the center is about 18 feet and it really helps to open up the space even though it's a pretty small square footage. Uh, so it kind of lives a lot bigger than, than the square footage. The living room is kind of just in the main space and it takes advantage of the best view of the house looking out to the north at the mountains. So in the living room, I have my nice comfy couch right now. I am thinking about doing kind of a, a dining booth that's really comfortable to hang out at for getting people together. I spend a lot of time thinking about the decisions I've made, you know, with trim or any details or just like how the space lives, what furniture is in it. And I think it's good over time to just try things, see how you like it, and then you can always redo it over time if you don't like it. All right, and right back here is my bathroom. Even though it's a small house, I wanted to make the bathroom a pretty good size since it's such an important space. 
kind of an interesting shape being in a round house. My fixtures are pretty much all from salvage stores. And I have these Soji closet doors, which a friend of mine made in the valley. So my closet has all of my clothes in it. Practically get dressed in the bathroom, so why not have your closet right there, I guess. It also just made sp sense with the space, so. Well, since this is the bathroom space, it's where all the water connections are. It just made sense to also have my laundry uh, here as well. And my water heater kind of lives right, right behind there. I have a dryer out in my shed, actually. So back in this closet, I have my uh, combination water heater unit, which has the hydronic floor heating and the, the hot water for the house as well. Uh, and the great thing about it is it's pretty much the size of a regular water heater unit, and it does, does both of those things. So, Hydronic heating is floor heating using water circulation. The floor heating is maybe one of the best decisions I think I made in this house. It's so nice to live in, especially because this is a cold climate. It's just warm, but not uncomfortable in any way. You don't, you don't get the dry air or anything like that. It works really well with concrete floors because you have that thermal mass to kind of dissipate the heat into the space. All right, in the shower, I use a nice vintage 60s pink bathtub, which I love. It's a pretty interesting custom shape because of the, the round house. And I want it to be very light open space. So I have windows over the shower and this kind of half wall, which makes you feel not very confined in there. Because this is such an interesting shaped space, I have these little triangle areas left over. Um, so I was just trying to take advantage of that for, for storage. Um, and this is all not finished yet completely, but that's what it looks like today. I want to do like nice cabinet doors on here, and then I want to have like a pull-out drawer underneath here eventually. Smiling Yurts is a local company, so I learned about them when I moved out here, and they're just such a cool structure. So their kits are called yurts, but they're basically round houses. So the kit is like just like four foot wide wall sections uh, to make a round building. And then they have a vaulted ceiling and big center skylight is probably like one of the main features of it. It's pretty, pretty easy to build the, the structure itself. Definitely the finishings end up being a lot of work because it's round and so you have these small angles everywhere in the building. But the kit itself is all pre-cut and super easy to, to assemble. I think the kit was a little over 30 grand. And as far as how much I put into this, something like 150, something like that. Went into utility routing and things like that. But definitely even with a kit building like this, I think Smiling Yurts they'll tell you like two to three times the cost of the kit to finish it. Routing the utilities was pretty expensive, especially because I had to pay somebody to do it. I did a lot of the other work myself to save money, and that's something I didn't really want to do myself. Uh, and the groundwork and doing the slab was also a big expense, yeah. Yeah, people might hate me for saying it, especially now post-pandemic, but it was 35000 for this piece of land, which was 2017. Yeah, which was like the market rate at the time, but now, I mean, this lot today, if it was for sale, would probably cost 120 something like that. So prices have gone up a lot just in this valley, and I know they have everywhere. My kitchen's over here in this corner. This kitchen that's here right now is kind of meant to be temporary, but has been here for years. I built this just quickly in like a weekend out of two by fours and kind of simple lumber and it's all on casters because this house wasn't finished when I put it in here and I wanted to be able to just pull it out and work on things and then put it back into place. So that's worked out really well. At some point I will put a new kitchen in into this space. So I already have some salvaged nice cabinets for it that I'm gonna put in and then just do custom countertops. Haven't really decided what kind of countertops yet. It seems crazy to buy everything new. <laughs> There's so much stuff lying around. These windows are kind of one of the main features of my house. That's where all my good view is, so I want to really be able to live with that view in my space. One of my favorite things in this area is the sky, so I want them to be as tall as they could be to just really let the sky in. I just built these half curtains just to give me privacy, but, but not close off all the windows. With these custom cabinets, they're in sections, so there's gaps between the sections, which does get annoying, and 
things drip down there sometimes. And I just used free tile that I had on hand for this temporary kitchen, which has worked out great, but is definitely kind of a shorter term solution. So when I put new cabinets in, I'm gonna do a continuous countertop through, through this whole section, which will be nice. Yeah, it will be tricky. I mean, the angles, the angles make everything difficult, but not impossible. The vent for the stove, I basically put this in to pass my final inspection. It's just a quick plywood box to have the vent hood in. Uh, so I'll also replace that with something nice. Uh, and this is just a $50 salvage stove as well, which has also worked out great. I might even keep that for the final kitchen because I kind of love it. I also have these kind of wire basket drawers, which have been really nice for storage. That will eventually get replaced with cabinet drawers uh, someday. And then I also have an old baker's rack, which is great as a kind of makeshift pantry for the short term. This was a pandemic purchase. <laughs> I had a smaller fridge, which I thought would just be more economical and fit with the space. But during the pandemic, when I was trying to load up with food, I ended up with a full-size fridge. And over here, I have my little workspace corner. I work from home, so I do spend a good amount of time on the computer. It's kind of right in my nice open living space, so it feels very open, which is great. I insulated this whole place with wool. It's a little more expensive, but in a small building, I think it doesn't add up to be much more. So I, I thought it was definitely worth it. And then all the wall coverings on the interior is uh, all just sheetrock. Wool is, I'm gonna sound like a spokesperson. Uh, so, so it really is probably the best insulation. It has a good R value, I mean, a similar the R value of fiberglass in terms of thickness, but it doesn't collapse over time. It's not susceptible to moisture failure. It doesn't mold. It's also environmentally friendly besides shipping it. <laughs> I definitely hate drywalling. It's probably the worst step of the entire thing. I have 11 foot walls, so giant 12 foot sheets of drywall, which is not fun. Finishing drywall well is really an art. Like. <laughs> You have to be good at it or you have to practice it, especially with these slight corners like in a space like this. Don't look too closely at mine. It's not that good. I actually did spend a good amount of time researching alternatives and didn't find anything that great. So ended up just drywalling. All right, let's take a look at the loft. All right, this is my bedroom space up here in the loft. I have a queen bed up here. Good headroom for most of the loft space up here. So my plan is to do just a bedroom extension off the back of the yurt at some point. Uh, so you don't need to come up to the bedroom up in the loft. So this would be more of a living room space or kind of a guest place to sleep up here. So these pipes over here are my drain system vent and the radon vent that's required by code. So rather than do like a whole wall section that connects to the ceiling, I just put them uh, actually into a stove pipe that I just painted white just to kind of minimize it. Radon emits from the ground in certain places, oh. and so lots of places require radon vents um, coming through a slab. You have to put down radon rock under the slab, and then there's like this porous vent thing that comes up. It's pretty annoying because it's a three inch pipe, which is huge, so it's pretty, pretty hard to get from underground all the way out the ceiling. So yeah, the ceiling and the dome is probably one of the best parts of the, the Smiling Woods kit. They make these nice custom wood rings for the top and then a, I think a five foot skylight, which just lets in tons of light uh, and is great. Uh, and they also open, so it's really nice to, to vent the space. So I have a cover uh, for the summertime. It lets in a ton of light, uh, especially sleeping up here. You want to darken it up. So I made a cover that goes into there. So the ceiling panels uh, is part of the kit, AC plywood. Um, and it's all custom cut for these kind of V-shaped angles to fit between the rafters. These pieces are, are trim that are attached to each rafter section. Yeah, and this roof is steep enough that um, with any kind of sun exposure or anything, it sheds snow uh, pretty quickly. There is a lot of snow in this climate, so shedding snow is good. The structure is incredibly strong, so it could definitely take the snow load if it needed to. Super happy I did it. It's, it's a great space to live in, live in a round building. The flow of it is really great. Like I think if this were a rectangular house of the same square footage, I think it would feel very 
tiny and enclosed, and because it's round, it just has a nice flow to it. And just, I don't know, the light in it is really great. Like, yeah, it just feels more connected to the landscape. Especially in this lot, I think it works really well. Like, cause the view does kind of surround this property and so it kind of curves with that. So this place is permitted as a single family house. The permitting was, yeah, pretty easy. I think our system is probably more relaxed than a major city or something like that. Yeah, I had engineered plans for this and uh, it was pretty easy to get a permit and go through that permit process. I guess the hard part about that is that whole process is set up for professionals. And so if you're just building yourself, often it's like you don't know <laughs> exactly when to do inspections and things like that. So it's a little bit of just figuring it out. But yeah, it went, went pretty smoothly. I didn't have any major issues with that. Around the time I was going to build this, there was some hesitancy in the community about tiny houses, especially in residential areas, because there's larger single family homes and people were worried about the appearance of like smaller houses in the community. There were some fights going on about that at the time. I don't think anybody directly complained about my building, but I was nervous about it in permitting because of that, <laughs> yeah. A lot of that older houses out here are very small and so I think actually small houses fit well in this community so it never made a lot of sense to me but I'm someone who I've just always been afraid of having a mortgage like I just don't want to be tied to some giant mortgage I think probably a lot of people can relate to that it's really appealing to just do something on your own and be kind of in control of how much it's gonna cost <laughs> I'm also just a big fan of living smaller like I think the average house is just way bigger than people need, and it's wasteful in terms of energy and materials and everything. So I think it makes a lot of sense financially to go smaller. It's just way more practical for the environment and for every reason, basically, yeah. But it also kind of allows you to more easily live with nature, be spending your time outside. That was part of my intent, is that I'm not gonna just be inside at home all the time. watching our video and for stopping by Tiny House Expedition. I'm Alexis. And I'm Christian. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And for more tiny home tours and stories, click the videos below. And join us on Instagram for bonus content. Including face-to-face -face conversations with us. <laughs> <laughs> we hope to see you there. All right. Thanks, guys. Have a good one.